The story of the Tower of Babel explains how all of the people of the ancient Near East used to speak the same language, but that at some point, the peoples were separated from each other and began speaking in different languages. The story ends with the genealogy of the Semitic peoples, ending with Abram, son of Terah. The text says that Terah had three sons named Abram, Nahor, and Haran. But is there any evidence that these patriarchal figures ever actually existed? Well, archaeologists have discovered a huge library of clay tablets at the ancient site of Mari, which is now located along the border of Iraq and Syria. In this library, there were many ancient records listing several biblical names as actual cities or locations in the ancient world. The Mari tablets mention the city of Nahor, which was the name of Abram's brother. Terah, Serug, and Peleg are also listed as cities in the ancient world. According to the Bible, Terah was the name of Abram's father, Serug was Abram's great-grandfather, and Peleg was Abram's great-great-great-grandfather. So as the the story goes, Terah moved his whole family away from the city of Ur of the Chaldeans by the Euphrates River and settled them in the city of Haran, 600 miles to the northwest in present-day southern Turkey. However, Terah's son Haran died before they left, so Haran's son, Lot, went with them on their journey instead. Terah originally planned to move his whole family to the land of Canaan, but then changed his mind when they arrived in a town named Haran, maybe because it reminded him of his dead son. Later, God speaks to Abram and tells him to leave his father's household in Haran and go to the land of Canaan. So Abram obeyed God and set out for the land of Canaan with his wife, Sarai, and his nephew, Lot. God said to Abram, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. After they arrived in the land of Canaan, God appeared to Abram again and said to him, To your offspring, I will give this land. This promise was significant for several reasons. First of all, Abram was homeless and God was promising him a home. Second, Abram and Sarai weren't able to have children and God was promising them descendants. And finally, God was revealing himself to Abram who came from a family of pagans who worshipped other gods. But the text says that Abram believed what God said and because of this, he was considered righteous. However, sometime after Abram arrived in Canaan, there was a severe famine and Abram decided to leave the promised land and move his family down to Egypt. He told his wife to pretend that she was his sister so that when the Egyptians saw her stunning beauty, they wouldn't get jealous and kill him. The Egyptians did indeed notice how beautiful Sarah was and they told Pharaoh about her. Pharaoh then took Sarai into his house to be one of his concubines and he reimbursed Abram for allowing him to own his sister. So Abram ended up getting rich off of Pharaoh because of this little scheme of his. But God didn't like this and he sent a plague on the Egyptians until they learned the truth. Pharaoh sent Abram and Sarai away and the plague was removed. Now this story is similar to the story of the Exodus in several ways. In both stories, there's a severe famine in Canaan. In both stories, the patriarchal family relocates to Egypt. In Genesis, Sarah becomes the property of Pharaoh, and in Exodus, the Israelites become slaves to Pharaoh. In both stories, God sends plagues on the Egyptians. In Genesis, Pharaoh sends Abram and Sarai away from Egypt. And in Exodus, Pharaoh sends the Israelites away from Egypt. And finally, in Genesis, the Egyptians give Abram wealth before he leaves Egypt. And in Exodus, the Egyptians give the Israelites wealth as they are leaving Egypt. So, after the incident in Egypt, Abram took his family back north through the Negev wilderness and up to Bethel. Lot's shepherds and herdsmen began getting into fights with Abram's shepherds and herdsmen because the land didn't have enough resources for all of the animals. So Abram and Lot met together and agreed that they would move their flocks and herds away from each other in opposite directions. Abram gave Lot first pick, and Lot chose the well-watered land of the Jordan Valley near the city of Sodom. Abram moved in the opposite direction to a place called Hebron. Some time later, several eastern kings joined forces and conquered the five great cities of the Jordan Valley, including the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Later, these five cities started a revolution that was quickly squelched after a great battle near the Dead Sea. Many people were carried off to the north, including Abram's nephew, Lot. When Abram heard about this, he gathered up the Amorites who were allied with him at the Great Trees of Mamre, and he set out in pursuit of the invaders. Abram's surprise campaign was successful, and they brought back all of the captives and their belongings, including Lot and his family. After the victory, all of the kings came out to greet each other, and King Melchizedek of Salem, which would later become Jerusalem, came out to greet Abram and give him a blessing. In response, Abram gave a tenth of his possessions to Melchizedek. Now this passage would later serve the Christians who wrote the New Testament as a precedent for tithing to God, with Melchizedek being a symbol of an eternal representative between God and his people. The king of Sodom then tried to give all kinds of riches to Abram in gratitude, but Abram refused to accept them, saying that he didn't want anyone to ever say that Sodom made Abram rich. But we'll learn more about Sodom in another episode.